increased stencils using spackle. I start out with a small project to show you how to practice and stay with me till the end when I show you the finished product. Enjoy. Without further ado, let me put this down. And now, this was the first piece that I prepped yesterday with the spackle and allowed it to dry. Now this one I purposefully, if you can see, I made it very chunky. And there's a reason. This is a very thick stencil, but that's not the reason. The reason is it's really hard to get it smooth, at least your first time. So you can place the stencil back on once it's dry. You can either get some of these scouring pads because they're really fine, or you can use a block that you've already used a few times. So it's now more of a polishing sander. And put it right back on top. And the spackle is pretty delicate, because remember, it's meant to go into holes. So it's pretty easy and forgiving to work with, and it's so inexpensive. The mud products that a few companies have, or the products that are made specifically for this, they're so expensive that you try to save every drop, and that, that scraping of the product to get it back into the jug, it ruins your delicate stencils. So you just place this right back on top. If you want to get it to be a little lifted that thickness or you can this one I made a little smoother let's get that up a little more I tried to be really smooth with this one and I'll use the softer side and very gently rub And then buff and you can see those lines are coming out if you want to press harder put the stencil back on. that way it won't let you go down too far but again you have to be careful with the stencil back on because you're now sanding a stencil so watch those little this one doesn't really have those fine unattached edges like some of them do so you can be a little rougher and get it very smooth. Now you can paint underneath it all depends you know your final what you're going to be doing. These I did for example and like I said I recommend you practicing. So let me just show you. We'll do another. Well, he doesn't fit. Do a little lizard. Let's see. Okay, Mr. Lizard. You're kind of cute. Kind of cute. So for Mr. Lizard, he's kind of small. Open up the spackle. And again, it is just spackle. You can get it anywhere. And you literally so simple and because spackle is forgiving unlike the paint if you get some of it underneath it just will scrape right off and you're gonna paint now because this stuff is not expensive I'm not worrying about leaving some of it on the stencil um, unlike paint though you want to take this off once you're done you don't want it to go down the drain, so either hose it outside or use some baby wipes or lots of towels or something. Because you don't want to have to call Roto-Rooter and you can't spackle out your, your plumbing. Let's see, I'm get, trying to get this one really smooth so it will require less. And look, that's all you do. And then you just let them dry. So simple. This. So here are the few blocks that I practiced on that I just showed you and I do recommend practicing it's not too hard it is just like icing a cake and here were the practice pieces before I sanded them and then here next is the first piece that I tried it on this was an end table I literally found on the curb I put it back together I painted it with sunrise color from junk monkey I'll list that below and then I tried this process and this got me hooked a year later, this piece looks 
just wonderful, a little bit aged. And here's a sneak peek of what I'll be showing you. So I hope you stay with me, and I will put some time stamps below if you want to jump ahead, and I do go fast speed through some of it when it gets a little boring. So enjoy, and leave me comments and questions, and I'll be doing another one real soon, because I'm getting better. Can you stand it? This is the one I already used on my nights, on my um, end table, that was a junk find on the curb. But I like this pattern so much, it's just, it's kind of timeless. It, it's a little bit of everything, it doesn't reek a certain decor. So this was already done. Bought this on Marketplace for like $10. It was pretty beat up. I did it in black velvet. And the top I did black velvet and a brown glaze. And then I um, went ahead and sealed it. Um, I've nicked it up here today, placing this on here. But I'm going to actually do this one. Now I might as well just start it right now. I mean, you, you kind of already learned what you learned from me. You can go ahead and um, move on. But I'm going to try this one, and I'm going to place it in the middle. And then after it dries, I'm actually going to try to finish the whole thing. Where's my tape? I thought I had everything I needed. You don't need to put these in place, but since I'm going to be doing, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm actually going to take this in place just because I want it to be perfect. It's probably crazy. This was the first one, I, the second one that I did. And again, I want to tape it in place. Okay, let's give it a go. Now you can use a regular putty knife, but you know what? I found out this little palette knife. I like the flexibility of working with it a little bit better. So this is a small piece so I can move it around. And it's not like paint in that, you know, you want to start in a certain spot. Now I've kind of damaged this over here. So maybe I'll start where I damaged it by going with the grade of the stencil. Let's see how easy this is just like icing a cake. We've all iced cakes. Actually, I'm thinking about trying to, and this is probably craziness, trying to thin out this putty and actually putting it in a piping bag and pipe it within the stencil for a design, because I'm not very good at freehand. I just, uh, I start out small, I get bigger. Wouldn't that be kind of a nice effect to pipe it into the stencil with more of a texture like you would a cake? I don't know what you would, um, I'm gonna experiment with this medium, seeing how to, and I digress here. Because I don't wanna damage this stencil, I am laying it on really thick. And I, you can get putty at the dollar store. So it really doesn't matter if I use too much because I'm not trying to save the precious, I think one of the companies calls it mud, and it, I have never used it. It looks like it's a wonderful product, but I priced it. And as our lovely Sonia always says, I'm on a budget. And even if I wasn't on a budget, I don't know why I wouldn't want to use this. Now, I did not prep. I think I got that, asked that question. Uh, I didn't prep the surface. This is going right over top of Junk Monkey paint, Junk Monkey glaze, and banana peel. Now, when it does dry, can I just peel it right off? Like, will it come straight off? Of course it will. It's not stuck on here. It's not in a hole per se. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint it and I'm going to seal it and that's going to secure it in place. Now this end table, obviously there's going to be a texture on the top of this. And um, with that texture, you're not going to be able to just lay a cup or something on. So you'll have to use some kind of a coaster or something. So I'm going to... This is actually just as fun as painting. And so you can get it on a little thinner if you want. But like I said, I don't want to damage my stencil. So I'll show you a few different angles of spreading the putty, the plaster, 
the spackle and it really is like icing a cake. The only thing, try to go with the stencil. The stencils that have the edges that lift that aren't connected, you'll want to spread the spackle in that same direction. And since spackle is inexpensive, I put it on pretty thick. And this was only my second time, but I think I am hooked and I will be sharing some more. I'm perfecting my technique. And you can scrape a little off, even it out. Go in and try to see areas that might be a little lifted or a little that need a little extra. But I will show you here in a few seconds ways afterwards to fix a lot of your air. So here's the reveal. Ta da! <laughs> Such a simple process, it really is. And the effect is unlimited, the surfaces that you can do it on. And these little areas that are bad, you can get a tool. Here I'm using, I think this is for nuts, to crack open nuts to just kind of scrape off while it's still damp some of the areas that over spackled. Now here I took it outside to sand it and I placed the stencil back on top and I'm fixing some of the areas that were just a little thin. I wanted this to be a little thicker. And you literally put it back on top and start to spackle again and there you have it. Use a sanding block to smooth it out. I'm replacing the stencil and I'm sanding actually with the stencil on top to get it a little even. Fixing the areas, giving you a different angle here and here is the finished product. I sealed it with some metallic seal. I'll put the link for that at the bottom. It's from Junk Monkey. And a year later, through extensive use, it still is as charming as ever. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll be posting more with my more perfected technique. Enjoy and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you.